Hi everyone! We left off in class last week talking about the three major types of faults that can occur in planet Earth. You can have, let me see here, normal faults. Normal faults develop when the crust is being uh, put under extension or being pulled apart like so. And when you pull apart the crust, um, you can produce a sloping fault in which the hanging wall moves down relative to the foot wall. You can see that in the cross-sectional view of this picture. The second type of fault we discussed was a reverse fault. In a reverse fault, the crust is being shortened and thickened thanks to compressional uh, stresses like I'm showing here. And in that case, the hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall. So again, have a look at the cross section of that block model to see what I'm referring to there. And then lastly, you can have a strike slip fault. And in this case, what is being shown is a right lateral strike slip fault. Uh, but of course you can have um, left lateral faults as well. So faults are a great lead in to earthquakes because of course earthquakes happen when there is slip, um, when two blocks of rock slip past one another along a fault surface. During earthquakes, a sudden rapid shaking of the earth uh, occurs, which is caused by the release of energy stored in rocks. So one way to think about this is if you, um, let's say you're camping and you're hiking around by your tent and you find a stick and you wanna break it in half to feed your campfire. As you break the stick, you are pushing on it with both of your hands on either end of the stick. You are essentially putting energy into that stick you're applying force to the stick that's translating into energy in the, to the stick, which is accumulating until eventually the strength of the stick is overcome and it breaks. And when it does that, the energy that you put into the stick by uh, trying to warp it is released. And it actually releases waves, which you might be able to feel in your hands as a vibration. And if the stick is really big, it might even hurt a little bit uh, in your hands when, it, when it's broken. Okay, well the same thing happens as um, slip develops, in this case along a fault that is just newly breaking. Seismicity refers to earthquake activity. So the release of energy during earthquakes is called um, seismic energy or seismic waves because the energy takes on the form of waves. Seismicity therefore uh, is a term that we use to describe earthquake activity. It can occur during sudden formation of a new fault, kind of like what's shown on the picture before. Um, or it can occur during slip on an existing fault. And this is what, you know, the vast majority of earthquakes occur because of this. Normally, that slip um, is generated because of large scale tectonic stresses that are moving the plates around relative to one another. Um, but they could also happen because of magma that might be moving up in a volcano, um, a giant landslide, a meteorite impact, Nuclear bomb testing, hydraulic fracturing has been shown to cause um, seismicity, um, but usually it's uh, tectonics acting on existing fault surfaces that leads to earthquake. Here we've got a block model of um, a fault plane that is separating a hanging wall here from a foot wall over here. The fault plane, of course, is this kind of brown stri striated surface here. So you can see that the hanging wall is always on top of that fault surface. And I want to define a few things for you here. When slip occurs on that fault plane, it always initiates at a single point, and we call that point the hypocenter or the focus. That is the uh, location of slip initiation on the fault surface at depth. We uh, think of the epicenter as being the surface projection of the hypocenter or focus. So very often when we're talking about earthquake locations, um, what we're discussing are the epicenters. So the surface locations directly above the hypocenters or the places at depth where the earthquake nucleates. Um, so we can make maps where we plot the epicenters of lots of earthquakes. Um, if the fault is a vertical fault, then most of the epicenters will plot directly on top of the fault trace, like is shown here for the Denali fault. If the fault is, um, is a dipping fault, then the fault trace at the surface, let me see, I'm gonna outline it in red in this top model, would be right here. But notice that the earthquake epicenters, which I'll put into yellow, are here and here. They do not lie on top of 
the fault plane because of course the fault is dipping and the um, focus or hypocenter of the earthquake is on the fault surface at depth. Very often epicenter maps can clearly show fault geometries. So for example, we can look at this, um, the picture on the upper uh, photo here, and you can see that the earthquake epicenters are lining up along a structure that has this form. This is the Southern San Andreas Fault as it heads down into the Salton Trough. Same here, like you saw before with the Denali Fault. You can see that the Denali Fault has this trace. Um, in fact, that's often how we map faults is based on the uh, maps of earthquake epicenters. But you can also see that these are tracing another fault over here. Displacement or offset is the amount of movement that occurs across a fault. Displacement is sometimes evident by offsets of fences, roads, streams, etc. This is particularly true, of course, in strike-slip faults like what is shown here. So in the left-hand picture, you see the fence line. It's doing this thing, and then the fence abruptly ends. Where does it go? Well, you've got to jump over here to the right in order to pick that fence up again. So the distance, I'm just going to label it here as D, that distance along the fault, which has to have a trace like so in this picture, is the displacement, the amount of displacement that occurred. Now, what we don't know in this picture is if that displacement occurred um, as a result of one earthquake or multiple earthquake events along that fault. And that makes a big difference because if it's one earthquake, then that's a really big event. Um, if that same amount of displacement uh, was caused by multiple earthquakes, then each one of those events would be relatively small. Here's another picture of a fault trace, this time just drawn directly onto an aerial photograph. The fault trace is simply the place where the fault plane, which is a two-dimensional uh, planar surface, where it intersects the ground, also a two-dimensional surface. So um, where you have um, two planes meet one another, by definition, geometry requires that that be a line. So the fault trace is the line um, that you would uh, sketch in an aerial or map view to show where the fault plane intersects the surface. So here it is shown with this red line. The fault scarp is the vertical um, throw, the, the, the feature of the landscape that has a vertical component that is created by slip on a dipping fault. So in this case, we have our fault. This would be the fault line or the fault scarp, or excuse me, the fault trace right here. And then this kind of steeply sloping bit would be the scarp. And we, of course, have a normal fault. Let's take a look at this picture, which is um, the bottom of a big alluvial fan in Death Valley. Um, take a moment, see if you see the big fault that's running through this picture. Do you see it? I'm gonna draw the fault trace along just half of the picture for you. Okay, here it is. Okay, I could extend it further to the right, but I'm not going to for now. Hopefully you can see that this is an alluvial fan that is developing at the foot of these mountains as rivers dump out all of their sedimentary load when they get to the valley floor and lose energy. Um, but this fan kind of abruptly ends at its toe and is cut off. And in fact, if you look closely, you'll see that there are scarps developed along this fault trace, along the entire length of the fault trace. I'll just try to kind of shade it in in yellow here. These are fault scarps. That's a fault scarp. These here are fault scarps. They look really tiny from this point of view because this is a huge area. But if you were to go and stand, you know, over here, you'd see that these scarps are probably the, you know, taller than you are. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Um, please um, go and watch the earthquake videos next. Earthquake video next. Thanks.